everyone, welcome to the next game that I'm going to be playing. It's a new Nancy Drew game that I just put on my computer, and this game right here. It is Last Train to Blue Moon Canyon. So let's get this started. Welcome to my latest case, Last Train to Blue Moon Canyon. To start, choose Junior or Senior Detective. If you're new to adventure games or need some help, click on Tutorial. As always, I'm going to start as Junior Detective. So let's see what this mystery goes and how we're going to figure this out. So let's start on Junior Detective. Dear Hannah, here I am at the railroad station along with a handful of other detectives about to board a train bound for who knows where. The only person who knows where we're going is Lori Gerard. That's the young woman who invited everyone. Actually, she didn't really invite me. She invited Frank and Joe Hardy, and they invited me. And I've always wanted to join forces with the Hardy boys. I just hope this doesn't turn out to be another one of Lori's silly attempts to grab publicity. Some people can be a little too rich and a little too famous for their own good. Wish me luck. Love, Nancy. Well, people, now that our little orientation tour is over, let's get started. Okay, I, again, am Lori Gerard, and the first thing I want to do is thank you all for coming. John Gray, I am so thrilled that you're taking time out from that TV show of yours to do some ghost hunting here with us. I mean, Ghost Chasers is like the best cable show ever. And Charlena Purcell. I cannot tell you how much I adore those romance novels you write. Your characters just seem so real. And all that stuff you know about the Old West, you are just awesome. And Tino Balducci. Only the uh, most famous Tino. police detective in the I country. Why do not and then there's Frank and Joe Hardy. They're amateur hey, Hardy. detectives. My dad and their dad are old friends. And you must be the other amateur detective, their friend? Natalie? Nancy. Nancy Drew? Whatever. All right. I'll bet you're wondering where we're going. Well, we're going to Copper Gorge, Colorado. Why? To solve the mystery of what happened to Jake Hurley, the man who originally owned this train. Because, see, one day in 1903, his train this train was found in a place called Blue Moon Canyon, which was out in the middle of the Nevada desert. Only the engineer was on board, and he was dead. As for Jake Hurley, he had disappeared from the face of the earth. What? Oh, and two more things. Before he disappeared, Jake was rumored to have found the richest gold mine in the world. And the train he owned, this train, his wife Camille died on it while they were going to the gold fields. It was rumored to be haunted. <laughs> what? Hey, what's what? going on? Oh my gosh. What in the world? Hey, what's going on? Yeah, I agree, Tino. What's going on? People should never go tampering with things they don't understand. Oh, oh brother. It's okay. Everybody just stay calm. No need to panic. I'll get to the bottom of this. Yeah, right. Well, Nancy, you're up on all that social etiquette stuff. What are you supposed to do when your hostess vanishes into thin air? No one knows. So we meet with Charlotte. If I don't seem concerned, it's because I'm not. Lori Gerard is a young woman whose only goal in life is to be famous. She craves attention and habitually uses her father's considerable wealth to get it. Do so you think this is a publicity stunt? She just is doing this to get fans or something? So you think her disappearing like that is just some kind of publicity stunt? I just think she couldn't resist showing off in front of all of us minor celebrities. What was your name again? Nancy Drew. You and I have actually met. Sort of. I called you not too long ago when I was at Shadow Ranch. You gave me some information about Dirk Valentine. Ah, Nancy Drew. She doesn't remember me. You don't remember me, do you? No. <laughs> so this is what she looks like. Well, I can't move my mouse out because I'm still talking to her. But this is what she looks like in the game. So, yeah. Um, I'm going to talk to her. I want her to 
ask me more about Jake Hurley. What else do you know about Jake Hurley? Nancy! Come here! Uh, excuse me for a second. Okay, I can't talk to... Let's talk to the Hardy boy. Hardy boys first. Hey, Nance. Where have you two been? I followed Tino Balducci, and I went after John Gray. He went straight to the room in the car that used to be Camille's and didn't come out again. I could hear all these weird noises coming from inside. Any idea what he was doing? I was just about to go in, but the next thing I know, Joe's got my arm in a vice grip and is dragging me back here, babbling about how Balducci's our guy. He found something on the floor right where Lori was standing when the train went dark. I saw him pick it up and put it in his pocket. Then he left. Did you ask him about it? When I tried to talk to him, he just kind of brushed me aside and said something snotty like, I'm on the job here, Junior, so just go back to the playground and stay out of the way. In case you two hadn't noticed, we're not getting a lot of respect around here. Can't we at least tell Balducci that we do stuff for ATAC? You know the rules. ATAC? American teens against crime. We do a lot of undercover work for them. Wonder Cop's probably never even been undercover. Joe, let it go. Shut what it, Charlena right? have to say? She thinks Lori is faking this whole disappearance thing. Yeah. She's not the only one. How can you say that? You heard Lori scream. Anybody can scream, Joe. Especially girls whose fathers have given them acting lessons along with everything else they've ever wanted. What about you, Nancy? What do you think? I agree with you. I kind of agree with you. You've got to be kidding. Oh, come on. How can you not agree with Joe? Come on. Do you think maybe one of Lori's other guests is in on her disappearance? It's certainly possible. From the way she talked, it didn't sound like she knew any of them. Maybe that's what she wanted us to think. Or maybe that's what one of them wanted her to think. Well, whether Lori disappeared by force or by choice, what we've got to do now is find her. Absolutely. Has anyone talked to the engineer? Not that I know of. Then I'm going to head up front and tell him what's happened. Maybe he knows something we don't. Good idea. In the meantime, we'll take another look around in here. Great. Catch you later. What he is doing is reading. Okay, before we go talk to the engineer, let's look around in here. It looks like there's something behind this painting, but I can't seem to move it. Yeah, this is going to be a puzzle later. Sadie Crawford. Sadie Crawford. These are going to be a do for our doll puzzle, so these are clues for a doll puzzle we're going to do later. Um... A square and a duck. This is a clue for another puzzle. It looks puzzle. like this thing opens up, but how? Looks like some sort of steam valve. That. Um, we're gonna talk to the engineer. Engineer, what do you want? Hello, I'm one of the passengers, and I just thought you should know that Lori Gerard has disappeared. So? I just thought you might want to call the police or something. Hey, all I know is I take orders from Miss Gerard, okay? Right now, my orders are to get this train to Copper Gorge non-stop. And until Miss Gerard tells me otherwise, that's what I'm gonna do. How is Miss Gerard gonna tell you if she's not gonna be on the train anymore? If she's not even on the train, how is she gonna tell you anything? That's really dumb. That wouldn't make any sense. But Lori may not even be on the train anymore. Look, Miss Gerard may not be a rocket scientist or anything, but even she knows better than to jump off a moving train. But now, if you'll excuse me, I got me a train to run. Jerk. I mean, whatever. I want to talk to... Yes? What are you working on? I'm writing my next book. I'm on a deadline, so until I write those two most wonderful of all three-letter words... The, the end. end. Everywhere I go, my laptop goes, and every chance I get, I write. Cool. That's the thing. What else do you know about Jake Hurley? You know, the man who originally owned this train? Wealthy, imaginative, adventurous, stubborn, egocentric, and most importantly, he was smitten at the age of 35 by a young French woman named Camille Boulet, who died about a year after they were married. Well, that's sad. 
Where was he from? East Coast. Philadelphia, I think. His parents were British aristocrats. Sometime in the 1870s, he decided to seek his fortune out west, so he had this train custom-built so that he, and some years later his wife, could traverse the mountains and plains in relative comfort. Ah. So he went west and became a miner? All anyone knows for sure is that years after Camille's death, he showed up in Denver with a pouch full of gold nuggets and semi-precious stones, which he used to purchase mining supplies. He refused to say how he'd come by them, which of course led to speculation that he had found a fantastically rich vein somewhere. Although to this day, its existence remains unsubstantiated and its location quite unknown. Why do you think Lori invited you on this trip? Yeah. No doubt because I'm such an authority on life in the Old West, and because I'm so good at using old information to unearth new information. My knack for research is... well, it's, it's a, a gift. gift. I'll let you get back to your writing. That would be nice. Mm -hmm. You're so nice, Jorminus. This is what she looks like in the game. But she looks really realistic in the actual, uh, picture of the Shadow Ranch. Pretty. Looks like some kind of gemstone. And this is ge this gemstone is going to be a puzzle for later. But let's look at this, and this is what the puzzle we're going to do now. Okay. So, we're going to do this puzzle. Whoopsie. Okay. Uh, Wait a that is not what I wanted to do. So do you see how these two go together? Okay, let's make it up. No. Uh, there we go. No. That does not go there. Hmm. Oh, I see how it goes. Here we go. See, these two go together. And, uh, this. And this goes there. B3. And, uh, this goes here. This goes down here. This goes. I don't know. Um. Bottom. But, you know. Bottom. Left. No. Hmm. Really strange. Oh, I have it backwards. Do I? Trying to figure out in my notes what I'm supposed to do. Okay, now I know. Now I know.
Okay. Nope. Ah! What am I doing? Okay, what am I doing? I'm supposed to be doing this and I'm being ridiculous. Okay. No. Nope. Okay, so these three goes here. Uh Okay. Oh, my phone keeps doing that again. I'm gonna go crazy. There we go. There we go. Pickaxe and lamp with Buell for safekeeping. To open what's closed, lead is the key. Or is it lead is the key? And we don't need anything else from this, so let's go. This must have been the sleeping car. Okay, don't touch this. Don't touch this, because that means we need another. This is this is. I need four numbers to unlock this, and there's, what, 10,000 possible combinations? <laughs> uh, guessing could take me a while. A tale of two dolls. Ill temper Edna could not get her away. She couldn't get Alice to come out and play. I can't, I'm too tired, is what Alice said. Oh, I just want to go straight back to bed. Edna angrily tried to make herself heard, but all she but all that came out was one two part word. Well I'm not your mother, no, yawning Alice replied. Till Edna the terrible time I gave up and cried. That's sad. Okay, let's see what's in here. Let's talk to John Gray. Hi, you're that Nancy person. How you doing? John Gray. You look pretty busy. Right now I'm taking time-lapse electromagnetic readings and recording background noise. This was Camille's private car. If she had something to do with Lori's disappearance, analyzing these readings may give me a clue as to Lori's whereabouts. What? Are you saying that Camille's ghost kidnapped Lori? Yeah. What to most people are ghosts are actually temporary <laughs> distortions in local electromagnetic fields caused by the presence of residual psychic energy generated by the person or persons who frequented that particular locale. That's my working theory, at least. That's, That's interesting. very interesting. Yeah. It's all very scientific. But the fact is, Lori's missing, and I, for one, am doing everything in my power to find her. The vibes I'm getting make me think she could be in serious trouble. Charlene Purcell thinks Lori is just playing some kind of joke on us. Charlene Purcell writes romance novels. End of comment. What, what do you Tino? think of Tino Balducci? I kind of feel sorry for the guy. After catching those bank robbers, he can't just be a good cop anymore. He's got to be a great cop. Tough to perform under that kind of pressure. Is Lori a friend of yours? first time I met her was when I boarded this train with all the rest of you. I knew her by reputation, of course. Like everyone else who reads the tabloids. <laughs> it doesn't appear that anyone aboard this train is her friend. Maybe she doesn't have any friends. Of course. Wouldn't be surprised. Maybe you can be too rich after all. I'll let you get back to work. Pleasure talking to you. Thanks. My phone is being stupid. Uh, and then you go here and you find a slug. The Little Book of Samplers. The Little Book of Samplers. No. See how duck is maternal, ter maternal, material, okay, evil America, heart, purity, square, nature, all of peace. Yeah. Sickly Sarah caught a germ so new it made one of her pretty green eyes turn blue. Yep. Okay. Yep, he's working. 
Teddy Eberhardt. Teddy Eberhardt. Okay, this is a puzzle that we're gonna be doing later. This looks like some sort of game. It is. So we can start it. Hmm. Nothing happens. I'll bet I have to wind it up first. Ah, that's right. I have to wind it up first because I'm an idiot. Wind it up. Oh darn. Really? Come on. Really? In here. I don't know how, it, how the words go. Camptown races. Camptown races, sing your song. Do da, do da. Looks like Camille was teaching herself how to play the piano. C D F G A D D E B D B E B G B A B B E B B B. Okay. Thomasina O'Neill. Thomasina O'Neill. It's locked. So not I wonder what's under here, and what the deal is with those weird-looking bolts. Yeah, you'll see this at the end. Of the, at, this is a puzzle for later as well. And this is looks like some kind of sewing sampler. I wonder if there's a relationship between those symbols and those numbers. Yep, you'll see this up, just like you read in the sampler book. Awful, Ursula, she's another doll. Now watch this, this is pretty funny. <laughs> Don't do that, please! Those microphones I set up over there are very sensitive. I just about took out my eardrums. You can play that thing when I'm done. I'll let you know when that is, alright? Okay. Nancy? Please don't. Don't even think about it. Nancy? Nancy? <laughs> Nancy? This is funny. Please don't. Nancy? I'm wondering, I'm waiting for him to say no, no, no. Please don't. Okay, fine. Don't tell me. And then my phone. Hello? Nancy, hi, it's me. Hi, hi Bess. And me. Hey, George, what's up? What's up? You're the one who's on the train with a bunch of famous people. You tell us. This is torture, Nancy. I'm dying of curiosity here. Bess, just calm down. Oh, what if you're not just as curious as I am? She's the one who insisted we call you Nancy. Only because you're driving me crazy. I'm supposed to be helping her paint her room, but every other brush stroke, she's like, Where do you think she is now? How do you think the Hardy Boys are doing? Why do you think she hasn't called? What do you think Laurie Gerard is wearing? Oh, George, that is so not true. I couldn't care less what Laurie Gerard is wearing. So come on, Nancy. You're on a train full of famous people bound for who knows where. So dish already, would ya? Bess, calm down. Look what you did. You got paint in my hair. I'm sorry. You know, actually, that looks kind of cool. Nice try, Bess. No, really. You're just saying that because you're afraid I'll bail and you'll wind up having to paint this dump all by yourself. George, I kid you not. You should seriously think about doing some major highlights in that color. What color is it? Adobe beige. Nice try, Bess. What's we'll going the, on, man? We're trying the dope beige for hair highlights. That's pretty cool. Our hostess has disappeared. What do you mean, disappeared? I mean, the train went into a tunnel, everything went dark, and when the train came out of the tunnel, no Lori. She just disappeared. Publicity stunt. My, My thoughts, thoughts exactly. exactly. Remember the time she was allegedly kidnapped from her Vegas hotel room? Yeah, the guy across the hall just happened to have a camera and got it all on tape. It made the evening news in practically every city in the country. And then there was her daring escape the next morning. Only it turns out she faked the whole thing. Of course, she claims her ex-boyfriend faked it to get back at her. She thought she was really being kidnapped. Why can anybody believe that? Sounds to me like somebody's been spending a lot of time reading the tabloids. George has. Very funny. So what else is going on? Uh... 
Before she disappeared, Lori told us that the purpose of this train trip is to find out what happened to Jake Hurley, the train's original owner. Was he murdered or something? No one knows. He was married to a woman named Camille, but she died, and he eventually vanished while mining for gold. His train was found abandoned in Blue Moon Canyon, Nevada, with no one on board but his dead engineer. Whoa, spooky. Have any theories? Not yet, but the train is also rumored to be haunted by his dead wife. Huh. So first Hurley's wife dies, then Hurley vanishes, then the engineer dies, then Lori vanishes. A pattern, maybe? Thus, do us all a favor and leave the detective work to Nancy, okay? Has either of you been to Copper Gorge, Colorado? Yeah. Never heard of the place. Why? Well, that's where the train I'm on is headed. Apparently Jake Hurley buried his wife Camille there after she died on the train. She died on the train? Ew, creepy. John Gray has set up a bunch of equipment in Camille's train car in hopes of documenting distortions in the electromagnetic field caused by her residual energy. Say what? He's looking for Camille's ghost. Don't you ever watch him on TV? Just because I watch him doesn't mean I understand him. I better go. Remember, when in doubt, call. Oh. I know, I know. Oh boy, and here's the guy I don't like. Tino Balducci. Let's talk to him. Hey! Nancy, hey. right? Uh, That's right, Nancy Drew. Amateur oh, detective, huh? Never thought about becoming a real detective? You know, like me? No, well, I don't know. Do you like what you do? I loved. You, uh, heard about those bank robberies I solved, right? Yes, I sure did. Baffling case. Two-man team at 17 banks in three states in five days? FBI had no idea who the perps were. But after forcing their vehicle to a stop, confronting them, despite the fact that they were armed and giving chase, I single-handedly made the collar. I heard they stopped because you accidentally rear-ended them. <laughs> you heard wrong. Yeah, right. You see, Nancy, when somebody does something really remarkable in this country, the first thing everybody else does is try to tear them down. Reporters, late-night comedians, even some of my fellow officers, all have been spreading vicious lies about me. Why? Because they've never done anything remarkable in their sorry little lives, and they're jealous. Anyway, you should look around in here. Lots of interesting stuff. This was Jake's private car, you know. And? I understand that you found something on the floor in the dining car. Yeah, at uh, first I thought it was an old coin, but it uh, turned out to be some kind of slug. Where do you think it came from? Probably been lying there for a hundred years. May have served a purpose back then, but now, worthless. May I see it? Sure. In fact, here. Keep it. Wear it around your neck or something. That way, when people ask you where you got it, you can tell them Tino Balducci gave it to you. THE Tino Balducci. Oh, thank you. Don't say What arrogant. else can I do for you? He's arrogant. Nobody likes an arrogant person. And how the heck am I supposed to wear it around my neck? It's a round object that doesn't have any freaking holes. <sighs> Tino, you're an idiot. So, what do you think happened to Lori? Well, she could have been kidnapped, she could have been tossed off the train, she could Tossed be off the train. Us. But I obviously won't know which until I've gathered all the facts. What facts? Well, when do you think that will be? I'll know the facts when I know the facts. The truth can't be rushed, you know. Whatever. Have you had a chance to talk to Charlena Purcell? Now, why would I want to do a thing like that? You don't like her? I can't stand those sappy books she writes. And seeing as I said as much during an interview on national TV once, it's a pretty safe bet she doesn't like me. Have you talked to John Gray? God, you're the ghost guy? Total quack. Only reason I talked to him would be to arrest him for fraud. He's probably saying the same about you. You're arrogant and you're stupid, so stop being a doof. Thanks for your help. Anything for a fellow detective. Oh, shit. Camille with Hager Anderson and Chantilly Hildegard. So the two other dolls. And Camille. She looks very pretty. 
Okay, I'm done looking at it. I put it down. Put it down, thank you. Gemstones, and how do I identify them? Okay, so quartz, amethyst, citron, tiger's eye, diamond, olivine, zircon, garnet, tourmaline, aquamarine, emerald, garnet, hydrate, emerald, ruby, sapphires, zircon. Okay. Looks like an old-fashioned cigar box. Wonder why it's locked. And what does AG mean? Look on the period. The 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 Okay, silver. Okay. J H for Jake Hurley, obviously. Must be Jake's insignia. No, uh, so this is a game or a puzzle we're gonna be playing later in the game. Another gemstone. Of course. Eliza Sandberger. Another doll. These are our pipe puzzle. This is how you do it. Okay. Uh, hmm, okay, There we go. 
there. All done. There we go. Okay. Well, let's go here. An old scale. Strange. It seems to be built into the wall. Those symbols look like the ones I saw in that sampler. It's locked. Crap. Need to do it again. That square in that duck looked very familiar. Those colors have to do with silver. Holy stupid Nancy, you know what that means. Silver is orange, blue, green, red, purple, yellow. You know what that means. Nope. Let's go look at it. Obviously. Okay. Uh, this one? Looks like to make this one? thing, whatever it is, I'm going to need a spyglass, a pickaxe, and a lamp. Citrine, amethyst, zircon, those are all gemstones, I think. Yes, they're gemstones. Another doll. Okay, let's go see. Okay, so this is a puzzle. We're going to have to do it later. Looks like I need to enter eight letters into this thing. The question is, which eight letters? This is another puzzle. So, this is a guessing puzzle. Oh my gosh! I never thought you'd be the one to find me! No offense! Uh, Nadine? Nancy. Nancy Drew. Well, as you can see, I wasn't really spirited away by ghosts or anything. That bookshelf in the dining car? You step on this thing in the floor in there, and it slides open. I practiced disappearing for weeks. So, it was just all for show? Well, not entirely. See, here's the deal. My dad wound up with this train when he bought out Noram Shipping. They'd been storing it in this old warehouse outside St. Louis for so long that everybody had just forgotten about it. Anyway, after, like, mass begging on my part, Dad had the train restored to working condition and got me an engineer and track permits and all that other stuff until finally 
here we are, on our way to find out what happened to Jake Hurley. Why do you need a train to find out what happened to him? Well, see, I was one of the first people in like a hundred years to set foot on this train, okay? Everything was just the way it was when Jake disappeared. Except Actually, I all also of us are this. first people. It's a letter that Jake wrote in 1901 to his niece back east. He was real paranoid about claim jumpers, which is why he never told anyone where his mine was. But he was also afraid something would happen to him and no one would ever know where it was. So he wrote this letter to his only living relative, Ruth Kensington. Here, take it. You want me to have it? Why? Because you found me. See, in that letter, Jake tells Ruth that everything she needs to figure out where his mine is, is on this train. He also warns her that his wife's spirit is on the train, too, which kind of creeps me out. But the thing is, to find Jake's lost mine, we need the train. How do you know this Ruth person didn't find the mine decades ago? Mostly because I found that letter in the wastebasket. It was like she'd gotten so ticked off trying to follow her nutty uncle's clues that she finally said to heck with the whole thing. So you want me to try to figure out where the mine is? Uh-huh. As for the other people on board, if you want to show them that letter, go ahead. It's totally up to you. We're going to Copper Gorge because that's where Jake buried Camille, so I figured his mine might be somewhere around there, too. But if you think we need to go somewhere else, you just let me know and I'll have the engineer take us there. How come you didn't try to find the mine yourself? Maybe I did. Or maybe I just thought letting other people try to find it would be a good excuse to throw a party. I like parties. How well do you know your guests? Well, I don't know you or those Hardy guys at all. Hardy. Frank and Joe Hardy. Whatever. I didn't know John Gray before this either, but I love his show. And I figured he'd jump at the chance to investigate an honest-to-goodness haunted train. And now that someone has finally found me, I can finally go meet him for real. What about Tino Balducci? I met Tino right after he got famous for solving those robberies. Inviting him here for this was a no-brainer. I mean, what an awesome detective. And those piercing eyes of his, you just know his mind's in there going 90 miles an hour. You're right. How well do you know Charlena Purcell? I just know her from her books, which are so good. In fact, I just started reading her latest one, The Moon Tells No Lies. See, what I'd really, really like to do is write romance novels. Everybody who knows me says I'd be really good at it. In fact, a while back, I sent Charlena some ideas, you know, just to see what she thought. And? She hated them. Guess I'd better get to work. <laughs> you go, girl. Yeah, fight the power. Okay, so let's look around in here. Locked. Locked, naturally. I wonder how you open it. Okay, so... The 3rd of November, 1901, from somewhere in Colorado. Dear Ruth, I know that we've never met, but now that your father, my estranged brother, is gone, you are my only living relative. I am writing to you to tell you about my mind before I... First, you will need a map, but to retrieve this, I promise... wonder how you're supposed to get this open. Yeah. Okay. So... Okay. I can use this to open that grate I saw in Camille's car. Yeah, we need to take that. Looks like a dance floor, maybe? Okay, so... I wonder if this has something to do with that list of cities Jake mentioned in his letter to Ruth. And it does. So, in my notes, I'm going to do this. Let me go to my notes. Go to my notes. Go to my notes. Go to my notes. Okay, Calico. C A L I C O. 
Okay, Silverado. S I L E E R A D O. Okay. Guess I'm done. Strange. All that's left is a jumble of letters. So let's go back to the project. Let's do dance first. That must be the projector Jake mentioned in his letter to Ruth. Okay. Okay, so yeah. Um we are C and like arm is buzzing up. I'm gonna get comfortable so I can play this game. Okay. Okay, so T E Mine must be somewhere on this map, but where? The little lady detective. What do you need? I found Lori. She was hiding in the caboose. Oh, yeah? She disappeared because she wanted to see who'd find her first, which is why she left that clue behind. That slug? I mean, I knew that slug was a clue. That's yeah, why right. I gave it to you. I mean, I could have found Lori no sweat. But I thought, uh -huh. hey, why not give somebody else a shot? And you came through. Nice job. Thank you. But look, from now on, if you come across anything that may have something to do with Jake hurling his mind, let me know, okay? Just so I can, you know, give you advice, help you sort things out. After all, the opportunity to work side by side with a world famous police detective doesn't come along every day, you know. Nobody cares that you're a police detective. No one cares, Tino. 
Oh, how did you and Lori meet? We met at a party in New York. Nice girl. Not a lot of stares, but nice girl. She seems to have a thing for your eyes. Yeah, she always told me they were... I mean, she told me once that she thought they were very, uh, you know, brown. She has a crush on Lori. What do you think happened to Jake Hurley? He probably died trying to work that mine of his all by himself. But I'll let you in on a secret. I wanted something that could crack this case wide open. You know where the mine is? Sorry, can't go into detail. Let's just say that thanks to yours truly, what happened to Jake Hurley won't be a mystery much longer. <laughs> you are right. It's been great talking to you. Not a problem. What's going on? It's been great talking to you. Don't mention it. I wonder what Jake used this for. That could be one of the gems I need. Maybe Tina will let me take a closer look. What's going on? Do you think I could take a closer look at that cougar statue? What, that cigar clipper? Go ahead, take a look. I'll bet I need this stone to build that thing in that diagram I found. But if I remove it now, Tina will know I'm onto something. Interesting. <laughs> I just wanted to get a good look at it, that's all. What else can I do for you? I hope I didn't take up too much of your time. Helping people is what I'm all about. You're right. Uh, let this open. Let's see. Hmm. So it's orange. I work out. Red, purple, yellow. Wilson Carbide and Acetylene Works. Always your friend, Thomas Wilson. Looks like a pattern for some kind of dance step. Maybe I'd better keep this. What's going on? Nope. Hope I didn't take up too much of your time. I talk to Anything him. for a fellow detective. Okay, let's go fix the... No, let's go do the dance step. Okie dokie. This is awesome. This is the dance step. Okay, got my dancing shoes on. Now what? Okay, we're gonna do this dancing. Dancing, dancing, dancing. Okay. So... Makes this little tappy heels sound. Uh, one, two. No. Three, four. 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, two. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No, I did not. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Guess Camille liked to collect dolls. Okay. The doll puzzle. So before we do the doll puzzle, let's go to the open. That thing. That pipe. There. The ghost man is. The ghost chaser man is. That tool I saw in the caboose. I bet that's what you use to unscrew these bolts. No, really, Nancy. More pipes to connect. Yep. Totally it's gonna be into the puzzle. Here we go. Here we go. Let's see if we can go look at that cooler statue. Can I do the What's going on? Thanks for your help. Do you. Don't mention it. Can I look at the cooler statue? Looks like I can't let look at it right now. Okay. Is there something I should do? The shoes is so faded I can't tell what it is. Hmm, maybe Bess and George can help me figure out who made them. Okay, I'll call Bess and George. This is the Drew residence. Please leave a message at the beep. It's Nancy. Just calling to say hi. You don't need to call me back. Bye. Hi, Bess. Hey, what's going on? Lori gave me a letter that Jake Hurley wrote to his niece telling her how to find his gold mine. If Lori 
knows where the mine is. Why doesn't she just make a beeline for it? Because apparently Jake was too paranoid to tell his niece outright where it was. So he filled the letter with all these weird, obscure clues. I don't think Lori could make heads or tails of them. I know I barely can. Sounds like when he lost his wife, Jake may have lost a few marbles as well. The name of the company that made Jake's wife's dancing shoes is too faded to read. But to find Jake's mine, I need to know what it is. Hey, I know what you can do. Take a picture of them with your cell phone, then send it to us, and we'll check them out for you. But I thought you guys had to paint Bess's room. Boring. Besides, we're going to have to take a break soon because we're almost out of paint. Probably because Bess has gotten more on me than she has on the wall. Anyway, send us a picture of the shoes via cell phone and we'll get right on it. Oh, you guys are the greatest. I know. Need anything else? I discovered this cabinet full of old dolls in a caboose. Old dolls make my skin crawl. Whose were they? They belonged to Jake's wife, Camille. Jake mentioned them in his letter to his niece. They could have been Jake's, you know. I mean, they never had a child of their own, right? So maybe after Camille died, he went a little bonkers. Oh, Bess. Hey, I'm just trying to think outside the box here, okay? Something it wouldn't hurt you to do from time to time, little Miss No Imagination. You know, maybe I'll just put this paintbrush down, walk out that door, and let you do this all by yourself. No! You've got to keep painting. If I don't get this done by tomorrow, I'll be grounded for a month. I was just kidding about your imagination. It's wonderful. You're wonderful. Very, very wonderful. That's more like it. <laughs> Tina Balducci definitely has a thing for Lori Gerard. Really? Ooh, I bet the tabloids would love to hear that. What's more, I get the feeling Lori feels the same way about him. You mean there's some kind of mutual attraction thing going on between them? Something's going on between them. I'm not really sure what. We'll find out! I mean, that's a mystery worth pursuing, to heck with this Jake Hurley stuff. You'd give up the possibility of finding gold for gossip, Bess? For gossip this good? Oh yeah. I'll talk to you guys later. We'll be right here. Yeah, washing the paint out of our hair. Again, just checking to see whether you were able to find out the name of those dancing shoes yet. Your wish is our command, but hang on to your hat. The name is a real mouthful. The shoes were made by Chaussette Chateauyant. C-H-A-U-S-S-E-T-E-S-S-E-H-A-T-O-Y-A-N-T-E-S. That's French for shimmering socks. Apparently she were dancing in the 1870s. That was the company to get your shoes from. Chaussette Chateauyant. Got it. Thanks, guys. Thanks for letting us help. I better go. Okay. Well, George, back to work. Okay, let's do the doll puzzle. Okay, so this goes here, stays here. Funny. Okay. Time. Helping people is what I'm all about. Can I? Wait, a minute. Wait, can I get the turpentine? 
No. Yep, carbide. Just what I need to make that lamp I found work. With any luck, I just opened the stove in the dining car. What's with the Cheshire Cat grin? You found Lori. Yep, she's holed up in the caboose. And as a reward for finding her, she let me have this. It's a letter from Jake to his niece in which he leaves clues telling her how to find his mine. Only the clues are extremely obtuse. You found Lori. You got the letter with all the clues. Guess you don't need us anymore. Oh, oh Joe, quit we pouting. Do. Want to help? I do. Are you kidding? You bet I do. Now you're talking. Balducci wants me to share everything I find out about Jake Hurley with him. I'll bet he does. He just doesn't want you to show him up again. Yeah, he wants you to do all the legwork so at the last minute, BAM! He can swoop in and grab all the credit. I wouldn't tell him a thing, Nance. Unless it's to get lost. It stands to reason that the only person other than Jake who had to have known the location of Jake's mine was the engineer on Jake's train. Very true. Not necessarily. Jake might not have told him the exact location. Maybe he just had him drop him off somewhere nearby. Well, still, we'd be way ahead of the game if we knew where that drop-off point was. If the engineer had any surviving relatives, we may be in luck. 
The guy died more than 100 years ago. How are we supposed to find out his name? Maybe Charlene or What's-Her-Face could tell us how to go about it. Good idea, Frank. I'll ask her. I found a diagram for some kind of contraption that Jake designed, but to operate it you need his pickaxe and some kind of lamp or lantern, which it looks like he gave to somebody named Buell. Buell? Joe, show her! Show her what? That old picture we found! Uh, okay. We found this on the bookshelf. See? Buell Supplies and Pawn Shop. That's gotta be the same Buell Jake gave his axe and lantern to. Yeah, a hundred years ago. And the guy was a pawnbroker, Frank. The stuff's probably long gone. Or maybe it's still somewhere in Copper Gorge. Well, that's where we're headed, so let's just hope for the best. Right. See you soon. Sounds good. James Thurston. Back already? I think I know the name of Jake Hurley's engineer. James Thurston. Great! What else do you know about him? Well, nothing. Good. Good? Yeah, finding out more about him will give us something to do. We'll look into it. See you later. You know where to find us. Yes? I found Lori. She's in the caboose. You were right. She disappeared because she wanted to see which of us would find her first. And you won. Congratulations. The others on the train, John Gray and that police detective, do you know them very well? I don't know them at all. Needless to say, I don't watch television, so I've never even seen Mr. Gray before. Although I do know that his profession, if you can call it that, is rife with crackpots. As for Mr. Balducci, from what I've read, his success in solving those robberies was less a matter of talent and more a matter of being in the right place at precisely the right time. In other words, you don't think he deserves all the attention he's getting? No. You and those two Boy Scouts you're with would make better detectives. Is Thank that you, Lena. Did you know that Lori wants to be a romance novelist? <sighs> Doesn't everyone. Do you think she could do it? No. Could we please talk about something a little more pleasant? I'm trying to straighten my legs because they hurts just sitting on them. I'll touch bases with you later. My publisher thanks you. That Kruger statue. I really want to get. Nope. 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 Don't want that. Jeez Louise. Okay, go down here. Statue? Glad you dropped in. Lori told me she'd given you a letter from Jake Hurley that says how to find his mind. I didn't really... mention it before because it's very bizarre. I mean, Lori should have given that to me. I mean, I'm the trained professional around here. Yeah, Let me take right. A look. She shouldn't give you that because you're not that professional. Mm -hmm. I've seen enough. Two words. Useless. Those are just the rantings of a guy who spent way too much of his life swirling mud around in pandering of the hot sun. Five-star nut job. You know what? You wouldn't know a good case or a good letter if it came up and bit you right under your nose. Ugh, you're so annoying, Tino. Lori says she found this letter in a wastebasket. Exactly where it belongs. You belong in a wastebasket. Hope I didn't take up too much of your time. Don't mention it. Oh, shut up. This is a reason why I don't like him. Okay. So, I'm looking for the rest of the... So, I've got this, 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 this. Whoa! Somebody must have thrown the emergency brake. The question is, did somebody throw the brake? Or something? Oh, Joe, now you sound like Lori. Hey, I was the first one on the scene, and I saw no one. 
Who was the next person on the scene? John Gray. Then Balducci came bursting through one door while Frank and the engineer came through the other. Boy, was that guy ticked. He said the train could have derailed. He reset the brake, muttered a few choice words, then headed back to the engine just as you and Lori showed up. Everybody was there except Charlena. I don't think she left her laptop the whole time. Do you think she could have thrown the brake and snuck back to her laptop without your seeing her? Not likely, but possible, I guess. The question is, why? What did she or anybody else stand to gain by stopping the train? Answer? Nothing. Which is why I think we should at least consider the possibility that something less human in nature may be at work here. Oh, that would be Joe. cool. I'm going to see if Balducci's done dusting for fingerprints. Catch you later. What's going on? Did you find any fingerprints on the emergency brake handle? None that right any help, thanks to Casey Jones up there. I told the old geezer not to touch anything, but he went and got his big, fat, oily paw prints all over the place. If we didn't need him to drive the train, I'd charge him with obstruction of justice. But whatever. Did you do anything else besides look for fingerprints? Of course. As a matter of fact, I found this. Probably fell out of the perf's pocket while he was yanking on the handle. Looks like some kind of thermometer. Yeah, like the kind a certain ghost hunter uses on that bogus show of his. You think John Gray threw the brake? But why would he do that? Because they're thinking about axing his show, that's why. I checked with this buddy of mine in L.A. Gray's got to come up with something real big real soon, or he's toast. And you can't get much bigger than a train with a spooky past that's prone to strange accidents, now can you? Have you confronted John with your suspicions? All in due time. I always like to get my ducks in a row before I make an arrest. You're going to arrest him? Hey, the train could have derailed. We're talking reckless endangerment, attempted assaults, maybe even attempted murder. John Gray wanted publicity. That's exactly what I'm going to give him. You've been a big help. Don't mention it. No, he hasn't. <laughs> What's up? I found Lori safe and sound in the caboose, so I guess those vibes you got about her being in serious trouble were wrong. Strange. My vibes are never wrong. What's even stranger is, I'm still getting them. So maybe they're not about Lori. Maybe they're about you. Me? I'm not in any trouble. Trust me. Either you or Lori is, or soon will be, in big trouble. Could you be more specific? Unfortunately, no. no. <laughs> I knew you'd say that. So are you making any progress in here? Oh yeah, not only am I getting some real unusual EMRs, that's electromagnetic readings, but take a look at this. You've got something? I set up a camera and took some time-lapse photos. Sometimes I was in the room, sometimes I wasn't, but somewhere along the line, I managed to get a shot of Camille. Where? You don't mean that little blob, do you? Yep, that's Camille. Okay... You're skeptical. That's cool. Just remember, the key word when it comes to ghostly phenomena is energy. That blob is the result of Camille's residual life force, spirit if you will, reacting with the chemicals in the photographic paper. Couldn't it just be a flaw in the photographic paper? Okay, it could be that too, but it's not. Trust me. Are you by any chance missing a small digital thermometer? Yeah, as a matter of fact I am. When I went through the box I packed them in, that one over there, I came up one short. I was hoping to set up at least six in here so I could check for cold spots. How did you know I was missing one? Because Tito Balducci found it by the emergency brake handle when he was dusting it for fingerprints. And now he thinks you're the one who pulled it. That's ridiculous. I didn't have any reason to pull the emergency brake. Have you been in this room the whole time you've been on the train? Of course not. I made a couple of trips to my compartment in the sleeping car to get more equipment. But did I get an overpowering urge to pull the emergency brake while I was there? No. Any truth to the rumor that your show's about to be canceled? Newsflash, my show was canceled. 
happened last night. But what nobody knows yet is that it's been picked up by a major TV network. Not only am I still on the air, but I'm sitting prettier than ever. Any other questions? I won't keep you any longer. Pleasure talking to you. <laughs> What's going on? You're the one who pulled that emergency brake, aren't you? <laughs> Me? <laughs> what are you, joking? Care to explain how packing material from the box those thermometers were in wound up on the floor over there? You're just some teenage nobody. I don't have to listen to this. And you're, you're right, you don't. Neither do the other church. passengers. But unless you give me a good reason not to, I think I'll tell them anyway. Look, maybe I was a little hasty just... pointing the finger at the ghost guy like been... that. Maybe all those lies people have been spreading are starting to get to me. Maybe I thought it would help if I got a little positive press by solving a crime aboard a haunted train. Maybe I apologize. And, uh, maybe you can see fit not to let any of this go beyond this room? Well, no, no harm done, I guess. No, no, so Great. Well, what else can I do for you? Thanks for your help. Not a problem. Nancy, you're an idiot. Nancy, you missed it. Missed what? The argument of the century. Joe, he's exaggerating. Oh, come on. You heard him. They were ready to tear each other to shreds. Who? Charlena and Lori. All we heard was the tail end of it, and unfortunately we really couldn't make out what they were saying. So, you don't know what they were arguing about? No, but whatever it was, both of them were absolutely out of their minds, livid. And it would probably be a good idea to find out why. Let me look into it. I'll talk to you later, okay? You know where to find us. More questions? What were you and Lori arguing about earlier today? Lori and I? We weren't arguing. We were simply discussing a topic about which both of us are passionate, that's all. Were you discussing her wanting to be a romance novelist? No. And even if we were, that's really none of your business. I know that sounds harsh, but really, Nancy, eavesdropping is so tacky. Actually, it was Frank and Joe Hardy who overheard you. They said I should talk to you before they gave me all the gory details, but since you obviously don't want to tell me your side of the story, I'll just have to get the scoop from them. No, no, you don't have to do that. A storyline that Lori submitted to me found its way into my last book, despite the fact that she never received compensation for it. She's reading the book now, and when she got to that part, she freaked. You stole one of her ideas? She had no business sending me unsolicited material. But, technically, yes. Now, legally, she can't prove anything, and I'm certainly not about to admit anything. And it's not as if she needs the money. But that's what we were arguing about. For what it's worth, I'm going to talk to this producer I know to see if he'll cast Lori in his next movie. It'll help ease my conscience, and who knows? She could wind up being a star. I mean, she is blonde. Would you like to see the letter that Lori gave me as a reward for finding her? The one in which Jake Hurley supposedly tells his niece how to find his lost mine? No, thank you. I happily leave it to you to try to solve the mystery of his disappearance. You can afford to look foolish, dear. I can't. Well, you know what? Whatever. You can be a doof. Aren't you even going to try finding out what happened to Jake Hurley? No time. The only reason I haven't insisted that Lori release me from all this silliness is there's always the possibility that what happened to him has the makings of a bestseller. 
although I highly doubt it. Why are you so sure that Jake's story wouldn't make a bestseller? His story is an all-too-common one. A man wanders off into the desert in search of gold and never returns. Why? He either doesn't have enough food or water, or he encounters hostile natives. What about his wife, Camille, dying on the train like that? That does make the story a little more interesting. She probably died of something mundane, like pneumonia or even measles. Now, if it was wintertime when she died, and they were in the mountains, Jake no doubt kept her body on the train for months before he buried her, which is rather delicious in a morbid sort of way. Ew. That, that's, a, that's a disgusting corpse, and nobody wants to hear that. How do you think Jake's engineer wound up dead on the train in the middle of nowhere? My guess is the engineer got tired of waiting for Jake to return, took off in the train to get help, and died of a heart attack along the way. After which, the train rolled to a stop in Blue Moon Canyon. Anyone experienced enough to single-handedly run a steam engine would have been quite a bit older than Jake. I'll let you get back to your writing. My publisher thanks you. No. No talk. Hey, how's it going? Were you able to find anything out about Jake's engineer? That James Thurston guy? Good news and bad news. The good news is he had a wife in Copper Gorge, so he may have had children. The bad news is our internet service provider stopped providing before we could use our cell phones to find out anything else. That's okay. We can do more checking when we get to Copper Gorge. Right. Copper Gorge. It's really easy because I played this game before. Um, train, food, museum. Hey there! Welcome to Buell's Old Time Taffy House! Come on over here! Welcome, stranger! Listen. You by any chance get here on that private train what's parked out yonder? As a matter of fact, I yes I did. Hmm. There's a rumor going around that Charlena Purcell's on board. Is that true? As a matter of fact, yes it is. Hot dang if that don't beat all. Hot dang. I've read every Who single book that? that gal's ever written. Best writer what ever lived. Did she get off the train too? I don't think so. She's pretty busy. Charlena Purcell herself right here in Copper Gorge. Breathing the same air as me. Hot dang. Well. Welcome, little missy. Go on in and take a gander at what life was like during the heyday of Copper Gorge whilst you sample some of our delicious homemade saltwater taffy. Sample? As in free sample? Some taffy on a stick will cost you two tokens, which you can get by winning both those games over there. How much does it cost to play them? Well, ain't you the little penny pincher. Fact of the matter is, they're free. Lest you go messing with the artifacts I got in here. Do that, and you'll be head first in the nearest snowdrift before you know what hit you. Artifacts? Where'd all these artifacts come from? Been in the family for years. For centuries, in fact. See, Buell was my great great uncle. This building used to be his general store. During the glory days back in the 1880s, he commenced a pawnbrokering. So the miners Copper Gorge was crawling with back then could raise some cash to pay for grub and tools and such. But pretty soon, the mining boom went bust. And there was Uncle Butte, stuck with a whole store full of junk. Only it wasn't junk to him. Debris from lost lives and broken dreams, what he called it. Couldn't bring himself to get rid of it. So he passed it on to his kin. My great granddad is the one who come up with the idea of turning the place into a tourist attraction. Do you by any chance have any of Jake Hurley's things in here? Jake who? Hurley. He was a miner. I think he may have left a lamp and a pickaxe with your great great uncle. Never heard of him. Of course, that don't mean his stuff's not here. Just means you're just gonna have to look around and see for yourself. But remember, Susie Q, don't touch. It was fun talking to you. Ditto, little missy. This looks just like the insignia I saw on the train. I'll bet this was Jake's trunk. If this was his trunk, maybe the pickaxe and lamp that I need are inside. 
so let's go play the game. Try that again. Down, but I'm not moving. Hey! Don't get the snake, don't get the snake, don't get the snake! Oh, come on! Token took me a lot of tries, but who cares? I'll be number nine. Yay! I'm number nine! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on. 
Facebook. Oh, I guess we'll be yellow again. I mean, I guess we'll be yellow. Come on, yellow, you can do it. But I was white an hour ago. Rats. I was white losing, and I lost when I was white earlier. Again. Come on. Really? And I lose. Are you serious? I'll be red. Some tappy on a stick. I'm going to need two different tokens. You still here? Do you know what's in that old trunk over there? Why? You ain't been fooling with it, have you? Oh no, of course not. No, I just thought it might contain the lamp and pickaxe that I asked you about before. Well, if it does, you can forget about them, because it's locked. None of my kin have ever been able to figure out how to open it. Not even my cousin Alvin, and he went to junior college. Would it be okay if I tried to open it? Well, now, I certainly ain't going to let you break it open if that's what you're getting at. Oh, no, I would never use force, believe me. But in order to try to get it open, I would have to, you dummy if it even thinks you not. Nope, sorry, not going to happen, little missy. Unless... Unless... Tell you what, you get Charlene and Purcell to come in here so's I can shake her hand, and I'll let you fiddle with that trunk till the cows come home. But Charlena is very busy. What if she won't come? Then I guess you'll just be out of luck. No, actually, you will be. Now, how do you figure that? Well, if you were to just meet her, you'd have nothing to show for it. Afterwards, she'd go her way, and you go yours, and that would be it. But if you were to, say, get her autograph, well, then you'd have something to hang on the wall and brag about. Okay. Make it so I can meet her and get her autograph. Oh, but the thing is, she's on a deadline, and if you take her away from her writing, she may fall behind. And if she falls behind, her publisher may pull the plug. And if her publisher pulls the plug, it could ruin her career. Do you really want to risk ruining Charlene Purcell's career? Good heavens, of course not. All right. You just get me Charlene's autograph, and you got a deal. Just make sure she uses my name. I want it real personal like. You bet. And your name is... Fatima, with an F. None of that weirdo PH stuff. Okay, 
Fatima. I'll be right back. Okay, we're gonna go get Fatima her autograph. Touch Arlena. More questions? I met a huge fan of yours in town who'd really, really like your autograph. An autograph picture would be even better. Imagine that. Me having fans way out here in the boonies. Well, I'm sure I have a picture around here somewhere. But what I don't have is a pen. Usually I just ask my assistant for one. I have a pencil here somewhere. A pencil won't do, dear. It has to be ink. See if you can borrow a pen from somebody. I'm supposed to ask Tino Balducci. I don't want to ask him. What's going on? Do you by any chance have a pen I could borrow? Why, I'm surprised at you. Don't you know that every detective should carry a pen? Actually, I carry a pencil. Well, as it happens, I got lots of pens. I'll tell you what. If you can play that Leapin' Lizards game I found over there and do better than I did when I played it, which shouldn't be that hard seeing as how smart you are, I'll give you a pen. What do you say? Sounds good to me. Okay, the object of the game is to get rid of as many lizards as you can by jumping them with other lizards until you can't jump anymore. Last time I played, I wound up with just five lizards. If you can wind up with only four, the pen's yours. You lost. Guess you're not so smart after all. Oh, sure. Try again. I am smart. Well, sure. Oh, sure. I'm smart. So smart. You lost again. One more time? Well, sure. Hmm. Let's see. No. You lost again. <laughs> One more time. Yes, I'm sure. Do you last time? Dee 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 d
Yeah, I'm singing the nomina for the Muppets. I haven't watched the Muppets in a, the Muppets in a long time. You lost again. One more time. Are you kidding me? Well, sure. You lost again. Oh. One more time. No. Well, sure. Perfect. Sense was. You lost again. One more time. Well, sure. His hair was like some something that I don't want to talk about. Something that I don't want to. You know what? Never mind. I said something. Two, three, four. You lost again. <sighs> One more time. Well, sure. Whatever. You lost again. One more time. Why am I even trying with you? Well, sure. How many times do 
just gonna do this puzzle. I did it! I won! Yes! Talk about luck. Here's your pen. It was not luck. What else can I do for you? Thanks for your help. Oh, yeah. Helping people is what I'm all about. It was not luck, you moron. It was easier than said than done. Have you found a pen so I can autograph that picture? I got it from Tino. You can keep it. If you could have it say, To Fatima, that'd be great. There you go. Anything else? Well, I'll let you go. That would be nice. Nancy. There you are. We've been looking for you. Yeah, you won't believe the lucky break we caught. Lucky break? Hey, that was the result of good old-fashioned detective work. It was the result of your insisting we stop for a cheeseburger. Guys, what's going on? Well, it turns out that a grandchild of Jake's engineer still lives around here. What's more, he hangs out at the local diner. Comes in every day. Apparently, he's pretty ancient. Ah, and you found that out when you stopped there so Joe could get a hamburger. Cheeseburger. The thing is, the owner of the diner wouldn't agree to point the guy out unless one of us fills in for a short order cook. He's gotta go home and wait for the cable guy or something. And since Joe here barely knows how to boil water, guess who got the job? Way to go, Frank! Oh, and get this. Balducci convinced Lori that Jake's mine is somewhere right here in Copper Gorge, so he, Lori, and John Gray are hiking up the mountain out there even as we speak. Like that bumblebrain's gonna find anything. Sounds like now might be a good time to do some serious poking around on the train. Good thought. Hey, I better get going. Wish me luck. I'll go with you. You can make me a cheeseburger. You know what? Yes, we can finally get that. Yes. No. I moved my microphones, so if you want to play the piano, knock yourself out. Thank you. Okay. Let's go back to talk to Fatima. Fatima. No, 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 no. Got that autograph? Got something better. An autographed picture. Hot dang! She spelled my name right and everything. Go ahead, little missy. Have a go with that truck. Whatever's inside, it's all yours. You want to speak to her? Hmm, this indentation looks familiar. 
Okay, so... <laughs> Password did that is me. Do you work here? I do. Are you looking for someone? Uh, yes. Camille Hurley. She died back in the 1800s. Ah, Camille. Beautiful crypt. Wonderful view. Good drainage. Whoever buried her must have loved her very much. May I go inside it? You may, but unfortunately you can't. Why not? I accidentally dropped the key down the grate that's in front of the crypt. If you can retrieve it, you can keep it. I'm having another one made. But if you do go into the crypt, just remember, you won't be alone. <laughs> well, there's the key. I'll never get that key at this rate. Gotcha! Okay, so let me use this on. Hmm, this indentation looks familiar. Okay, so let's... Wait a minute. P B C U. Hmm. Something fits in here. Okay, so... Green. Red. Purple. Yellow. Orange. Blue. In the letter he wrote to his niece, Jake said she should go to Camille's grave and let Camille's goodness rub off on her. Rub as in rubbing, maybe? If I am supposed to make rubbings of these pillars, I'll need a pencil, which I already have, and some nice thin paper. Okay, that's another for a puzzle. Okay. Red. 
green. Well, here's Jake's lamp. Another slug could come in handy. But where's his pickaxe? Welcome back! Have you by any chance ever come across a pickaxe that had the initials J.H. carved into it? Why? Wow. Because it used to belong to Jake Hurley, and I really, really need it. I needed it would be in that old trunk, but it wasn't. You got that trunk open? <laughs> Wait till I tell Cousin Alvin. He thinks he's so smart. Of As course. for that pickaxe, so happens I got it upstairs in my kitchen. Use it to open the coconuts Aunt Lucy sends me every year from Hawaii. Do you think I could have it? Why, no, you can't have it. How so would I open it? them coconuts? Hey, I could have just gotten you Charlene's autograph, but instead I got you an autographed picture, which is way better. You owe me. Ah, oh, okay. I'll let you have the pickaxe. After you do something for me. Sure. I got a bunch of taffy over there what needs sorting. Just follow the directions that are posted by the machine. Them belts get moving pretty fast, so you gotta keep your wits about you. Okay. While you're doing that, I'll fetch that pickaxe. You got a deal. Okay, so let's still do the taffy's one. Wax paper for the taffy. Would you mind if I took a piece of wax paper? Guess I could let you have a piece. Okay. No problem. That was easy. You sneak any freebies while you were at it? It was pretty tempting, but nope, I sure didn't. Well, ain't you the goody two-shoes? Truth is, wouldn't have minded too much if you had, long as you fessed up to it. Here's the pickaxe. Cracked the handle pretty bad on the last batch of coconuts. You sure you want it? Positive. There you go. Don't hurt yourself. I won't. Thank you. Okay. with the paper and pencil. Hello? Hey, it's Frank. I'm in the kitchen of the diner playing short order cook. Has that grandchild of Jake's engineer showed up yet? Just came in with this lady who's even older than he is. And get this. He's a retired miner, so every time I finish an order and ring the pickup bell, he thinks it's the mine shaft elevator bell. And for some reason it makes him start telling his lady friend about his grandfather. You mean you ring the bell and he starts talking about James Thurston? Exactly. Of course, five seconds later, he's rambling on about something totally unrelated, but I just fill an order, ring the bell, and ding, he picks up right where he left off. That is, unless I fill the order wrong and the waitress chews me out. She's got a voice like a chainsaw. Very distracting. Sounds like you better keep your ears open and your nose to the grindstone. I am. Just wanted to keep you posted. Well, good luck. Thanks. Talk to you soon. Now we're playing as, um, Frank Hardy. Okay, onions, jalapenos, hot mustard, bacon cheese. Okay. Onion. Jalapenos. Hot mustard. Bacon. I said bacon. And cheese.
whether you know what you want to order yet or not. I'm still looking. Did I tell you that my granddad was an engineer on a private train owned by one of the richest men that ever passed through Copper Gorge? Tomato? Jake Curley was his name. Yes, sir, my granddaddy was Jake's private engineer for more than 25 years. Told my daddy that men don't come any crazier than Jake Curley, or any nicer. Treated my granddaddy real well and told him stuff. Real important stuff. Stuff he made my granddaddy swear to never... Yes, sir, Jake Curley told my granddaddy things he never told another living soul. Not even his wife. I tell you about her, Edna. I don't think so. Camille was her name. Camille tomato, Boulet. fruit jelly, French, pineapple you know. cheese. Of course, she died so yeah. young that poor Jake didn't have time Avocado. to tell her anything. According to my granddaddy, one summer day she had a dizzy fruit spell jelly. and fell and hit her head. She didn't take well to the heat, see? And sometimes in the summer, when they were going through the pineapple. desert, why, that trade would be just like an oven. Anyway, cheese. granddad said she got right up afterwards and seemed okay. But a couple hours later, yeah. Jake found her in her room, dead as a doornail. Now there's another expression that kind of... Whoa, 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 wrong! I'm not serving this to my customer! Come on, new guy, make me another and make it right, or else! Hard to think, let alone talk, when Sally goes off like that. I did make it right, loser. Okay, avocado. Tomato. Tomato. Fruit jelly. Pineapple. Cheese. And mayo. The way my granddaddy died, that was kind of strange, too. I ever tell you how my granddaddy died? No, I don't think you did. Everything my daddy, he came home from clothes. school one day Can't to find a railroad official telling his mom mm -hmm. that granddad had been found dead in Blue Moon Canyon, Nevada. He was in the engine of Jake Hurley's train, just kind of slumped over with his hand still on the throttle. The strange thing is, nobody else was on board the train, yet the door to the engine was locked and barred. It was like Granddad was trying to keep someone out, like he was running from something. Like something finally scared him so bad his heart just stopped. Of course, he was in his 60s at the time, and back then that was old. <laughs> Doesn't seem so old now, does it, Edna? Here I am, pushing 93, and still spry as a spring chicken. Spring chicken! I ever tell you about the mine my granddaddy said Jake Hurdy found? He found a mine? A couple of years before he died, Granddad told my daddy that Jake found a vein in the mountains somewhere and was mining it all by himself, so no one would steal it out from under him. But the craziest thing Jake Hurley ever did was tell Granddad the secret to finding his mine. He made him swear to tell it to my daddy and nobody else. Eventually, my daddy, he told me, and it was so bizarre that I remember it to this day, though I sure don't understand how it had helped anybody find his mine. But since my daddy didn't tell me not to tell anybody, this is what crazy Jake Curley told Granddad, word for word. The eye of the tiger is fixed on a star. Zircon lies in fingers that scar. Amethyst floats in a hand from the deep. Citrine is what the foul mouth shall keep. Tourmaline by a soft arm is ensnared. Peridot rests at the foot of the mare. The eye of the tiger is fixed on a star. Zircon lies in fingers that scar. Amethyst floats in a hand from the deep. Citrine is what the foul mouth shall keep. Tourmaline by a soft arm is ensnared. Peridot rests at the foot of the mare. Frank, are you sure that's what he said? I'm positive. Do you think he could have been pulling your leg? Look, this guy was old, okay? I mean, we're talking Jurassic. And guys that old don't joke around. They don't have time to. What you just heard is what I heard, word for word. Got anything else? I almost forgot. You gotta check this out. It's just an old letter, Frank. You bet it's an old letter. From Samuel Clemens. Oh my gosh, where'd you get this? I found it in the caboose. Apparently he and Jake were pen pals. Wish I had a famous writer for a pen pal. When Joe gave it to me, I about flipped. 
I know I should turn it over to Lori, and I will, but it's just so darn cool. I still don't see what the big deal is. I mean, it's not like it's from Mark Twain or anything. What? <laughs> see you later. You know where to find us. Okay. Now let's do those rubbings again. Okay. So we got the paper. Let's get our. Wisdom, charity, purity, eternity. Okay, so we're gonna go back and do another puzzle, type puzzle. That eagle has something to do with the eagle in that painting in the dining car. Okay, so. Sorry about that. Okay, that's my phone again. Now let's do this. Let's do this puzzle on the piano. No, let's do it. Okay. First, we're gonna do the. Oops. Do the. Okay. More pipes. Why am I not surprised? Yep, more pipes. Uh. There, that looks right. Okay, we just finished that one. And now we're going to see if the pipes are all connected. Uh oh, that doesn't look good. Okay, so obviously they're not connected. So. Oh. 
Hold on. This puzzle. Okay, seven. Nine. And naturally, we have still more pipes. Okay. That should do it. For now, I think we should. Well, now the pipe should move together. Sounds like steam from the engine is moving through those pipes now. Okay. So now we do these puzzles. The machine puzzle. Camille's car. But first, we need a spyglass. So we need a spyglass. Okay. So. Um, e, 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 G, A, G, A, G, A, G, And then let's see. Wait. I do that again. Okay. G E G Oh, whoops, I forgot to put the music on there. No, it's not the music. It is the music. Here it is. Okay. There we go. A spyglass. 
I'll bet it's the one I need for Jake's projector. Go that, no. Go that way. Okay. Said a spyglass goes here. Okay, looks like that goes there. This goes here. Okay, and this how you do it. Okay. Starfish has needs this one. Okay. Okay. And then that one needs... This one. There's another one I need to get. Which is in the dining room. Alright, I missed that, Jim. There we go. Okay, so here we go. On our way to finishing up the game. Here we go. This one belongs to that. Whoa! Looks like I did something right. You did. You did. And now I'm gonna put the pickaxe. <gasps> oh no! What I need is some duct tape. Okay, and you know where we should get duct tape? Oh, gray. Hey, glad you stopped in. You gotta listen to this. If it concerns something ghostly, I'd rather not. No problem. What's up? I hear Tino took you and Lori for a little hike today. Don't remind me. Turns out Tino had no idea where he was going. Good thing for him, my fingers were frozen stiff. Otherwise, I would have strangled him. Would you by any chance have any duct tape? Got some right there in my gear box. That's the good news. The bad news is, I can't open the box. It's an antique lock box that I found in this abandoned monastery I scoped out on my show last year. You can open it with either the key, which I just discovered I forgot to bring with me, or the combination, which you're supposed to be able to figure out just by looking at the box. Fortunately, I didn't put anything critical in there. I've never tried to open it without the key, but if you want that duct tape, go ahead and give it a shot. Thanks, I think I will. If you get it open, the duct tape's all yours. There's an image on each of those buttons. They tell a story, maybe? I bet the animals should start from the left shore. 
Okay, so this is how you do it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There, good as new. Sort of. Darn, I must be missing something. Hmm. Missing something, what can I be missing? Oh, yeah, it should work now. The light switch, the coal. That's what I forgot. And we have your thought. Jake's mine is Brimstone Canyon. Don't you look all excited? What's up? I think I know where Jake's mine is. Tell the engineer to head for a place in Nevada called Brimstone Canyon. Way to go! I knew you could do it, Francie! Not Francie, Nancy. <laughs> Here's the deal. When we get there, I'm going to make sure that you get to be the first one to check out the mine. I'll call everyone together in the dining car, and while we're in there, you slip off the train. Will ten minutes be enough of a head start? That'd be great. Think of it as your reward. Of course, anything you find in the mine is, well, mine. So if I find out that you've taken something without telling me, let's just say things could get ugly. I wouldn't get your hopes up too high. The mine might be totally worthless, you know. I know, but I have the feeling that thanks to you, we are about to discover Just something huge. You didn't find it Great doesn't make job, it yours. Amy. Oh, thank you. like the train's leaving. Where's it going? Well, Frank and Joe will make sure it comes back for me. I hope. Okay. This is a puzzle. Easy. 
There you go. entrance to Jake's mine. Whoa, what's going on here? Jake's color wheel seems to be pointing toward purple. Wow, glowing lizards. Cool, but weird. Wait. She's supposed to follow the colors on the the scale and on the lizards. So here we go. This should be pretty easy. I'm trying to kill them, gun. Okay. Follow the orange. The red. And then the yellow. And then the green. And the purple. And the uh -oh. yellow. There's some kind of chamber on the other side of those poles. But if I move the wrong one, the ceiling will collapse. Jake was too meticulous not to have left a clue somewhere as to how you're supposed to move them. Okay, so, so far so good. Then this, then this, um, then this. And I this. should be able to get through there now. Mm. And there's your Jake Hurley. Hurley, I presume. Camille, it figures he'd be carrying a picture of her. Hmm, there looks like a letter. April 14th, 1865. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Your humble friend, Abe. Oh my gosh, this is from Abraham Lincoln. And April 14th is a day he was assassinated. This letter must be worth a fortune. That's just what I thought, too. See, what I didn't tell you when I gave you that letter Jake wrote to Ruth is that I also found his diary, which is how I found out he'd gotten to be friends with President Lincoln and that he'd gotten a letter from Abe that he knew would be so valuable someday that he always kept it on his person. Can I have it? Sure. See, I knew if we could just find Jake's body, we'd find the letter. And you did it, Amy. You did it. I'm going to be famous. Good famous for once. So you never really cared about finding Jake's mine? Nah. I mean, it would have been nice if it was filled with gold and silver and stuff. But this is what I was really after. And you followed me because you didn't trust me? I trusted you to find it. I just didn't trust you to give it to me. And now that you have, you know, I'd really, really be famous if I could say I found this all by myself. But even if I got you to lie for me, how do I know you'd keep lying? Aww. Oh my You're gosh! Fun. What if there was like this cave-in and we were trapped, but I was the only one who made it out? Uh, excuse what? me? It's not fair! Oh my gosh! That way I could not only say that I found the letter, but that I tried to save you. Only you did something stupid, and it was all I could do to save myself! Oh my gosh! I'd make the national news for sure! And people would say I was smart, and resourceful, and courageous even! Lori, you can't be serious. That's crazy! You don't understand. People are finally going to respect me. I have to do this. Sorry. Sorry! The opening's blocked. I'm trapped. I'd better get out of here before something else caves in. Okay. Maybe I could get out of here in this. Thank you. 
fun. I need to make sure which one's the right way. We're gonna end up. This is probably my favorite game because you just need to do something fun. And this is the only thing that was fun. Oh! Oh, this makes you look dead, dead, dead end. Get glory to art. <laughs> ha ha, that's what happens. Glory, are you all right? Nancy, is everything okay? It is now. As soon as we discovered you and Lori weren't on the train, we jumped off and hightailed it back here. What the heck's going on? I'm sure Lori will be glad to tell you all about it. Darn you, Natalie. It's Nancy. Dear Hannah, some hostess Laura Gerard turned out to be. When her father heard that she'd tried to seal me up in that mine, he canceled all her credit cards and said that from now on, Laurie will have to support herself. She has yet to stop crying. Tino Balducci told reporters that he knew what Laurie was up to all along. Yeah, And said right. he let Frank, Joe, and me solve the case so we amateurs could enjoy his limelight. Joe was just about to belt him when a big argument broke out between John Gray and Charlena over whether John had really recorded Camille's ghost. She started calling him a crackpot, and then he started calling her a hack. Then, well, let's just say that soon the press was no longer interested in what Tino had to say. As for Jake Hurley, it turns out that his letter from Abe Lincoln is worth a small fortune. Pretty ironic, huh? Jake spent his whole life searching for gold, when all along he possessed something far more valuable his uncanny knack for making friends. Love, Nancy. And here is the next game. Yay! Sassy Detective, we just finished. Now here's the next game. Have you ever been to Paris, France? Well, preparez-vous, because that's where my next mystery adventure takes place. I'm going to be the assistant to Minette, a famous fashion designer. I'll be working undercover to find out why she's been acting so peculiar lately. Throwing tantrums, firing people. She's even started wearing a mask for no apparent reason. Her studio is in this spooky-looking centuries-old moulin. That's French for window. Of course, that doesn't have anything to do with her strange behavior. Does it? Only one way to find out. Help me solve my next case. Danger by design. A la prochaine. A la prochaine. Okay, so that was the end of this game. Okay, so next time I'll be playing Wave Warnings at Waverly Academy and um, Nancy Drew Shadows at the War's Edge. So I'll see you guys later. Alright, bye. bye.